Hey you guys, today we'll be using the new Xtool laser, the Xtool S1 to create these beautiful engravings. And this is a video that you guys asked about it, you wanted to see it. You've seen me making the boxes for this, but I never showed you how I did the engraving, the settings I used and all of that. So that's what we will be doing in today's video. We will engrave this uh, yellow heart, we'll make the tulips and the same settings I use to make this one over here. And uh, also, when I showed you guys on previous videos, these boxes that I made with the Nightmare Before Christmas, I got a lot of questions on how I get this veneering and this kind of 3D design. So on today's video, we're also going to stain this one so you can see how I did it and what I used. This one is still wet. Whoop, that's why it looks a little bit funny. And, um, but we will make this one. And of course, we will use the machine to engrave these uh, tulips. Very, very pretty engraving. Now, I think this is a great time for me to tell you that the Xtool S1, it's finally out right now. You can purchase it from their website. I will put the link in the description below. If you do decide to use my link, um, just so you know, it is an affiliate link. That means to no extra cost to you, I will get a commission. And uh, if you purchase the Xtool S1, now you will also get a free honeycomb grid and a free air assist. And they also have an early bird special. If you use the link and the code in the description below, I have a code over there and you purchase anything from them in the next few days that is over $2,000, then that code will give you an extra $200 off. So that's a great uh, coupon, $200 off on your purchase. Also, this is not a review video. This is just showing you how to do this job on this machine. I do have a full review of the machine with the whole unboxing, uh, assembly and all of that stuff. And I will post that video on the end of this video. So when you're done watching this video, that one will pop up on the screen. So then you can watch the full unboxing and review if you're interested. Now, before we get to any kind of engraving, we have to talk about material choice. For example, here I use aromatic cedar. And as you can see, this one gave us a really, really nice result. This is the one with the yellow heart and this is the one we will be doing today. Really, really nice result as well. Here is the same design, the same settings and all of this. This is walnut and as you can see, this one, the same settings is very dark. That's because the wood is very dark. So then you just get kind of like it's kind of like a 3D effect, but it's a lot more subtle. I still like it. Now, here is some Aspen I tried, and I thought that the Aspen would be a great one for engraving because it's very, very white in color and will give us big contrast. But it turns out that Aspen has a lot of sapwood, and sapwood burns, and then you get these scorch marks. You see, this is not a design flaw because it's in the same spot, but the sapwood really scorched this material and it gave us some horrible burn spots. So Aspen, it's not a good choice of material. Now, when I look at my materials, I also look at grain. For example, this is some aromatic cedar. And I have three blanks in here. Let's just look at two of them. This aromatic cedar here, it's not going to make a good engraving because the contrast is so high that it's going to compete with our engraving. So we'll get a lot of really funny, weird business. Where this aromatic cedar, it's a lot more muted and this is what we need to get a good engraving. If you look at the back of my tulip design, you see it was not high contrast, it was very muted and this is already has a finish on it. So that's what you want. You want something that has color and some grain, but not too much. So this one will make a better engraving board than this one. Now, here is the yellow heart that we used. And then when you use uh, wood, you also have to look at the grain pattern. The grain goes up and down in here. And that's the way I want it for my tulips. If I put it sideways, my flowers kind of go upwards. So it will look maybe a little bit funny to have the grain go sideways. But for today, I will work with the yellow heart. So let's go to the machine and engrave our tulips on this yellow heart. All right, here's my machine, here is my material. I'll make sure I put the grain running up and down. I'm gonna move the laser head out of the way and put this right here. 
and then I am going to move the laser head over it and you can see we have the cross hair showing us where it's going, where the laser beam is. Then I'm going to go to my computer and let me just quickly start my screen recording. Now I'm recording my screen. You should see exactly what I'm seeing. We have no design right now in here. So we have to bring in our design. So let's see, I'll go over here to images and I have my design. I put it into my downloads. Let's see, where is my tulips PNG? I'm going to go with that one and say open. And it's too big. I'll say yes, scale to fit into the canvas. And there you go. It's still too big. It's 12 inches. So we don't want 12 inches. We're going to do it at five and a half inches. So 5.5 over here. Make sure this lock is on so that way it changes the height and width at the same time. So there is our tulip design. Now I need to modify this file a little bit because I do want to have a little bit more contrast. So what I will do over here, you can add a little bit of sharpness if you want. I'm not going to add any. What I will do is make this grayscales, the blacks. If I move this to the right, my blacks will become blacker. You see that? How it just gives it so much more contrast. So for this one, I'm going to go to around, I don't know, 41. We'll go with that. And then where the white parts are, I wanted to make them wider. That way, uh, that way will not engrave where the white parts are, the very bright parts. And that's because I want the yellow from the yellow heart to come through in there. So if I move the whites more this way, the whites become wider. So not that much, maybe just a little bit. So now we'll have parts of this image that will not be engraved where the very bright highlights are on the tulips. And those are the parts where the yellow heart is really going to come through. Now it's time to adjust focus on the X tool S1. So the way we adjust focus, you go over here uh, into the framing. And then I'm going to click complete. I didn't do it yet. I just want to show you. If you go over here where this sign is, just push on that button. Make sure the laser head is right on your uh, material. So when you click this, watch what happens. I don't know if you saw that. I'm going to move the camera on a different angle. And I'm going to do it again just because I want you to really see what's happening in there. So I'm going to put it there. And look at this pin. This is the focusing pin. I'm going to push this button again. And you can see the machine took focus. Now I am going to move you back here so you can see the whole machine. I'm sorry for all this back and forth. I just want you to really see what's happening here. All right. So now we took focus. We need to see where we want to place this image onto our material. We need to do the framing. And for that, I'm going to go here where it says mark processing area and say start marking. And now we have this dialog where we have to choose two focusing points. So two framing points. I'm going to move this X from my laser beam right onto this left corner, left top corner of my material, something like that. And then I'll be pushing this button over here on the front of the machine. So there you go. We have one coordinate. And then I'll move the other, the laser beam into the other corner on the right bottom. And I'm going to push the button again. So now we have two coordinates. I can close the machine. And what I will do now, I will say done. And let's see. So we had the framing. And now if we look on the screen, we have this green square. That is where our wood is on the machine. So now I can take this design and place it exactly where we want on that piece of wood. I make sure that it's completely within that green square. And right there, it looks great. I think our design is going to be perfectly centered onto the green square. So our framing is done. Now I'm going to click on the image and we're going to change our engraving settings. For the power, I will go with 50%. 
and then for the speed I will go with 100%. And then for the bitmap mode, I will go with Jarvis. I will leave lines per centimeter 100 and I will leave engraving mode bidirectional. I'm going to click framing just because I want to see exactly if it's framing where I told it to frame. I'm going to open again the lid just so you can see it. So let's click on framing. And now when we have this dialog, we can push on the front button on the machine and you'll see the laser crosshair showing us that's exactly where the image is going to be engraved. And that looks just the way I set it up, so I'm happy with that. I am going to uh, close the lid, say framing complete, and now we are ready to go for it. We did set the parameters, 50 power, 100 speed, Jarvis, like I said. Now I will click process. And then there's our image. We have to go to start, click on start. And then we wait for it. It's sending the file for processing. There you go, it is ready. So make sure that you do not leave your device unattended. It has that warning. Any laser, please do not leave it unattended. Now it's ready, all we need to do is push this button on the front of the machine. All right, the machine has stopped. Let's see what we have. And, well, it's not as dark as I would like it. It's still very pretty. Let's take it to the table and see what we can do to make it look better. So here we are, this is our design. It looks um, not as dark as the one that I did on the aromatic cedar, but that's okay because it will darken some when we put a finish on it. Now, looking at it, I could have went and pulled those blacks a little bit blacker when I pulled that slider on the blacks, but I didn't, so let's make the best of it and see what we can do. Now, usually when you do an engraving, you might have some sticky residue. So what I like to do is just take some um, isopropyl alcohol and put it on a white t-shirt or a rag and then just give it a little wipe. That will remove all that sticky residue. You don't want to use paper towels because paper towels will leave little, you know, fibers of paper in it. So. All right, especially the parts that I really wanted to stay yellow. All right, uh, for the finish, I'll be using an oil finish. You can use whatever you want. I had, um, for example, for this one over here, I have used a spray finish and I have used this one. I'll put it in the link in the description below if you want to purchase the same thing. And uh, as a disclaimer, the links in the description, they are affiliate links. So that means if you purchase, I will also get a small commission. For this one over here, I have used this semi-gloss. The other one was a glass. And then for this one, I have used shellac. I put about 12 coats of shellac. And then for the one on the walnut, I have used an oil because I want it to be this like, you know, I don't know. I like that look of the oil. So I'm gonna use the oil for this one, especially because the oil is really gonna bring in those yellows. 
So I'm going to use some of this uh, Walrus oil furniture finish. Do not confuse it with the cutting board finish. They also have a cutting board version. I'm going to put some in a tiny container. And then get yourself a cheap brush. I do not have a cheap brush on hand, so I'm just going to use this one. And I'm going to take some of this oil and just brush it in. I'm using the brush because, like I said, the fabric, it would leave fibers in it and to these grooves, it will stick to it. And then the brush also can get into all those crevices. And this oil really makes that yellow stand out. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's already looking much better. And as it dries, it will look even better. Now the light in the shop, it's really not good, but I'm gonna take this outside and show you what it looks like in uh, you know, natural light outside. Now, of course it's still wet, but you can tell how pretty it's going to be. Where you see these darker spots over here, it's just because there's a lot of oil in there and it needs to get absorbed in. And this is the one with the aromatic cedar. This is the one with the yellow heart. Now, when it comes to the Nightmare Before Christmas, as you can see, I engraved it exactly the same settings as the tulips, but this one, it's on maple, and I want it to be on top of a walnut box, not that box, I'll have to make a new one. But for that, I have to, you know, darken the maple, and also I wanna create that vignette. Because if we look at our other two boxes, you see, they're quite darker, even though it's still the maple, they're quite darker. Now this one has more brown in it, and the vignette, and the dye, and this one has more black. So let's see what we can do with our new one. The two dyes that I use for those designs, let me put my gloves on. The two dyes that I'll be using for this design is this uh, trans tint in black, and then I'll also use this uh, color tone and tobacco brown. Now I'm going to also use some denatured alcohol. I have some over here and I'm gonna put some in this container. And because this is very concentrated uh, pigment, so we wanna dilute it. So I have a small container here I'll put some denatured alcohol and then let's see what color we want to start with. Let's start with the black. Now let's start with the brown. So I'm going to use some of this tobacco brown, put some drops in there and then use a small piece of uh, t-shirt material. I'm just going to dip it in here and dab, dab, dab. I'll start with the edges even though I'll be cutting those off because I'll have to fit it to the box size. But that's what I will be doing on the edges. Just kind of dab, dab, dab. I wanna keep the snowman person intact. So I'm not gonna put any color there. All right, now I'll start adding black to this. So I'll take my black one. I'll just add it to the same brown color. I mixed in too much solution here. Obviously, I do not need that much. And then, of course, if you, my piece is not cut to size yet, but if it was cut to size, then of course, get the edges as well and the back of it so it matches your box. So that's kind of the idea of it. Um, I could stay here and play with it and keep adjusting it for hours, but that's the way I um, made those box lids. And then for this ones, I did finish it with the glossy um, lacquer spray. I used this one, and that's the way I finished those lids. Now I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.